regarding the human enjoyment of birdsong. Could it relate to our ancestral reliance on bird language to alert us to danger? Some birds and primates react to each other's predator alarms. Song mean, means all's well. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that is that is beautiful. Um, in most places where humans have done well, there are songbirds. And yes, we would have begun to listen to them. So, you know, we're effectively part, the hypothesis here is that we're part of their mixed foraging flocks. Uh, and that even though we aren't uh, contributing anything obvious to them, um, maybe we are listening for their song just as they are watching for our signs of alarm. And we will um, all be alarmed together if something happens. Yep, I like yeah, it. And like uh, it uh, by inducing you to pay attention to bird song, it could cause you to know when bird song has changed. And you know, you can hear lots of things. Squirrels, for example, will alert you to something you know that they regard as hazardous. Yep. Um, so, Usually yeah. not the same thing as a person regards as hazardous. No, in Squirrels general, seem to have in like general a, not, a lower bar for alarm. I, I do remember, I'm trying to remember which student it was. Uh, I had a student write a paper on the concept of um, whether there's this pattern of people, uh, hunter-gatherers, keeping pets, right, taking forest creatures and hand-raising them. And the question was whether this was providing them basically access to the sensory systems of these creatures that by developing an empathic bond yeah. that that creature then provides them a, an ability to see into the world the way, you know, dogs provide us the ability to detect scents that we can't ourselves smell. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, there's something to it. Also, it might explain some of the really weird behavior that every so often somebody will post a clip of. I saw one just a couple days ago. Uh, there was a magpie was ushering might have been a hedgehog across a road. And it was clear that this is what the animal was doing, that the magpie was coming up behind the hedgehog and urging it across the road, right? And, you know, well, the interpretation is up for grabs. But yeah. um, is well, it so possible? Well, ma so magpies are, I think, corvids. And yep. so corvids being crows and jays uh, and a few others and, and ravens, uh, you know, super smart. So, you know, just more theory of mind than, you know, other... Corvids and parrots, and then a smattering of mammal clades have theory of mind, um, and they seem to be able to empathize outside of clade. Apparently, helping right. helping a hedgehog. Well, it's also or, possible that it was ushering like, it to a cauldron to dinner. or something. Yes. Yeah, but uh, yeah, <laughs> you, we don't you will know. be the guest of honor. But you know, there are examples of partnerships between creatures. Yeah. You know, honey guides and people are a good example. Mm -hmm. there, there are natural examples of this where uh, there's a, a partnering. And in fact, mixed foraging flocks, if you're foraging on different things, you can afford to have a, effectively a school of birds, as it were, mm -hmm. um, that's larger than it would be if they were all your type and competing for the same food yeah. resource. Or even, I mean, um, you know, I think it's, uh, boy like ch uh, chickadees and kinglets in the Pacific Northwest that engage in these winter mixed foraging flocks in which I don't remember which it is, but one of them, they feed on very much the same winter berries actually, um, but they're very passionately distributed. And one of the species is much better at finding and the other species is much better at having sentries and watching out for predators. Mm. And so they actually are competing for the same resource, but together they're, they're both specialists on sum. something that each of them need. Yeah. 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 That's cool. 